we've done four movies now and it's just so nice having a history with someone off camera because I think that bleeds on screen and I think you know it's it, it, it works it lends itself and uh, you know Cap and Black Widow are very different people uh, it's kind of like this odd pairing um, she has very questionable morality and Cap's a Boy Scout on this film I think we really get to show Cap advancing in his skills and stepping up the fighting a bit more you know I think especially after Avengers you see how amazing everyone on that team is and what they bring to the table Cap needs to offer more than just a few good punches and kicks so the Russos and I all agreed we want to make this they had some great references um, from things like the raid and even the Captain America video game the Captain America video game he moves very well in the game and I would play the game and say, man, this is how Cap should be moving. And it was a really acrobatic approach to fighting. So they said we should put you in gymnastics class, or I don't know who said it first. But either way, gymnastics classes happened, and they were great. I had a really good time. Yeah, Mackie is a, a special guy. He's just got such a gregarious nature and so full of energy. I don't know where he gets it. I don't know how he sustains it. Um, but when he's on set, everyone's smiling, and when he's not there after a few days, you say, where's Mackie? You know, he just breathes life into his environments. I like the relationship between Cap and Sam. I think they each maybe have trust issues. I think they've each been on the front line. They've seen battles and lost friends. And I think Cap deals with a certain level of celebrity. The fact is, people do know who Steve Rogers is. We don't always explore it in the film, but I always interpret Cap as having a certain sense of loneliness, given the fact that everyone knows who he is. He is famous. And I think as a result, it makes him... Uh, I think he's a little suspicious of people's motives when they approach him. And I think they, they wrote a really nice scene for Sam and myself, for Mackie and myself, where you kind of see that he's not after that. He's just, he respects Cap. He knows what he's going through, and I think Cap senses that. I met with the Russos down at uh, Marvel and just kind of started picking their brains about who else they were thinking in different roles, and they were like, oh, you're not going to believe who we're thinking about for Pierce. I said, who? He said, Redford. He's interested. He's interested. They just couldn't believe it. <laughs> Neither could I. Uh, and then it just kind of happened. It was one of those shocks, delights. They have a, a real healthy knowledge and, and love for comic books, which I think is a good foundation. And they have an encyclopedic knowledge of film. When you watch playback and they reference other films in comparison to what this shot looks like, not only is it spot on, um, but it's just so like it's it's just it's so obscure sometimes. You're like, man, these guys really know their movies, and that's comforting. Well, when we first find um, Natasha and Steve, it's been, you know, it's kind of real time. So since Avengers, you know, whatever, it's been a couple years or so, and they have been tasked on many different missions together. Um, they're kind of just doing their job. Um, business as usual. They've gotten to know each other a bit. You know, so they have a more of a conversation, easy conversation between them than in Avengers. and. That's kind of where we find her. I think there is a much more um, kind of palpable bad guy here that people can kind of wrap their head around. It doesn't ask the audience to stretch their mind that far outside of home. And, um, and I think that is what will kind of draw the audience in and really connect them to this storyline. I think that there is so much to explore with Black Widow. Certainly, like her past um, is something that's always been shrouded in mystery. And, you know, we continue to open up the story, give little, you know, um, kind of tidbits and throw the bone out once in a while as to where she came from and what her, what her background is. So, I mean, I think there's a lot to explore um, there and certainly where she's going. I mean, she, when you take a character who's, who's had the past that she's had, um, who has seen the darkest places and who has chosen to make, uh, who has chosen to do the right thing because it 
had longevity and over time she kind of appreciates what the right thing is in her mind and why and sort of starts to understand the humanity but because she's seen the depths the darkest depths of humanity there's really such a full spectrum as to where this character could go and we know a lot about each other and chris is such an intelligent guy he's a witty guy he's funny um he's He's got a great spirit, and uh, and we just enjoy each other very much. The Russo brothers were hired for their ability to um, kind of, I think, to infuse this storyline with, uh, you know, a kind of contemporary, um, witty, quick, you know, sharp-tongued, dialogue. It kind of gives you this new um, motivation to want to learn about that. So when, when I, when, you know, for me, all those ideas about spies and the Cold War and sort of like what that was about and, um, we're all, it was all a great excuse for me to go and explore any of those things and see where I can find pieces where you could make it relatable and be grounded. And it's, it's, it's pretty scary what's out there in terms of, you know, we've always dealt with this idea of brainwashing. We've always, we've always had these ideas of what a Manchurian candidate would be. We've always had these ideas of, you know, creating a super soldier and sort of like healing quickly. And so all, all these things, um, have made the comic books for me far more significant than it than I than at first glance. How I always saw Bucky in the in the first movie was, you know, he he wasn't he was earnest. He was sort of loyal. He was loyal. He was all the he was all those things. But he he was you know he had flaws and he had sort of tendencies that he hadn't worked out and and he was questioning sort of why he was going to war and why he was fighting he was very protective of Steve and and uh, to some extent uh, uh, narrow-minded of, of you know what Steve really wanted because he always had this big brother thing I know better you know and it's it's the so anyone can sort of <laughs> I mean and this is an exaggeration but anyone can sort of end up a darker version of themselves. Even in, in the way that their relationship was depicted in the comic books and how Bucky was younger and so on, I mean, he was always the guy that was sort of doing the dirty work, behind, you know, behind, sort of, behind the scenes. Um, and and Cap had an image to protect, and, and so, and Bucky didn't. Bucky could, you know, explore his angry tendencies on the battlefield and was sometimes trigger happy and was very impulsive. And, um, and so I felt like that was like gold, a gold mine for me to discover. Chris is just, you know, he's a really, besides just being a great guy to be around and, and bringing awesome energy, um, which you feed off of and then like, you find a uh, you find a groove, which which so often these things become, you know, it's all kind of a choreogra choreography. So it's sort of it's sort of like a dance that you that you share with somebody. And um, there's there's so many little technicalities about spacing and kind of energy and speed and sort of the whole thing like crescends into a whole different piece and then it moves into a slower section. I mean, so it's like if you have someone that you can vibe with to do that then it's great and and uh we had that on the first one and i mean I, you know i've seen him on and off over the years but for us to come back and kind of pick up where we left off was very easy he's feeling pretty good about himself and the fact that he's convinced them that you know superheroes can work and that you know the world can be made a safer place because they're there and he's gotten like i said he's convinced these guys that they can do all this stuff and get things done but you know captain america's still not real you know sure about 
how we run things or how Big Brother has actually come to fruition. Well, he didn't know anything about Big Brother anyway, but how the government has intruded into everyone's lives and that people's freedoms are being sort of um, um, infringed upon. Uh, so he's having his moment. So we're trying to bring him into an understanding of what's going on. It's always great to have uh, Scarlett around, and even better uh, to have um, her as Natasha in uh, this particular series. Um, and her relationship with Nick is very special. Um, they've been through some things. He knows a lot more about her than most people. Uh, and in this particular uh, film, their, um, their bond is kind of tested in an interesting sort of way. It was a great opportunity to, to, to stand there and actually work with somebody that I've admired you know, for a very long time. Um, and it was a great joy to do that. Um, he's everything I thought he would be, you know, professional, shows up on time, hits his mark, knows his lines, and he makes it fun because this is a fun business and it should be fun. Uh, and when you have people like Robert coming into a franchise like this, it adds another amount of gravitas to what we do. Um, that it's, it's, it's a respect of a genre of film that they didn't necessarily have when he was a younger actor, but you know, he's taking a chance by coming into this world and experiencing it with us and, and, and adding another level of credibility as Marvel tends to do. We all know that this is sort of a special franchise and that we're in a special place because we're doing it. Uh, and we try and come, come here and bring as much enthusiasm and joy as we can because that's part of what makes an audience enjoy what we're doing. Um, but we also know that we're doing some serious stuff. So the level of professionalism and the, the dedication to getting it right and to being who we are supposed to be when we show up on screen is there. To please my grandkids. They got all wired up about this. They said, Captain America, are you kidding me? Oh, hey. They said, did you see the last film I did? No, I, I haven't seen that yet, but I will. Uh, I did it because it was different. Just something new to do at this point in my life. And so I just wanted to try it. Well, he's a, a minor character in, in the overall scheme of things, but, but considering the plot, an important one. Well, they're very kind, they're very gentle, they're very um, respectful and they also take no prisoners. Uh, they have a very strong idea of what, what they want to do, and they're pretty committed to doing it in their own way. I like that. They have a vision for this film that's theirs. I also appreciate it when a filmmaker has a vision that they stay connected to and, and enforce to the best of their abilities. What's really interesting about these guys <clears throat> is, yeah, they're brothers, but, but they work so wonderfully together, sort of symphonic. In other words, they have such, there's such a gentle respect for each other. So I used to get these comic books, go into my closet with a flashlight and read them. I love them. And they were a big part of my life as a kid, so I, I can fully understand why that kind of animation also when it's compressed into a short frame, a short storytelling frame, is very appealing to a young kid. Um, I think because of my love for comics when I was little, I then went on to really appreciate literature in a, in a greater sense. But when I was a kid, I mean, I, and I almost, uh, I, love the, I love the idea of maybe being one of them. I think this film will probably bring a, a fresh new look to it because of that reality. So when you mix reality with some of the extreme stuff that goes on, 
I think it's probably going to make it more interesting. You know, Marvel gave him a true background. They made him military ops. They gave him uh, the ability to fly through a military program and really made the Falcon kind of a, a code name as opposed to his actual name. So I'm glad that they went with that. They did a good job of making him his own entity. I feel like when you look at Sam Wilson and when you watch this movie, you know, there's nothing uh, uh, unforgiving or cheap about him. I feel like he's a he's a stand-up guy. He's a morally sound guy, and he f he works with Captain America and follows him through this. He works with Captain America and follows him through this um, this ordeal because he believes in him and he believes in the American dream. He believes in what America stands for at that time. Uh, so I think that says a lot about him. Well, with Sam, the, they basically connect on the idea that they were both in war and came home and dealing with the ramifications of, you know, waking up every morning knowing that you lost a loved one, a, um, a comrade in, in, in battle. Um, Sam works at the VA. Uh, he counsels and helps um, soldiers that have come back from war. And he kind of draws Cap into that. So Cap realizes that he's not out there on an island on his own. He realizes that other people have the same dreams and the same problems that he has. And Sam, you know, can not so much sympathize with that, but empathize with the idea of what he's going through. With Sam Wilson, we didn't really know what he was going to be. And when I got the script, you know, I was able to have those conversations with the Russo brothers. I was able to have those conversations and email with Kevin and Nate and Trent and really, you know, make this character into someone who we all believed could be real. And, you know, I see the way Chris works uh, on set with Captain America. And you see, you know, the way the Avengers came off. You know, when you see Iron Man, the way those characters come off, it's more than just watching a superhero, it's being able to watch a superhero and feel like you could possibly be that person. I did a lot of um, diving into swimming pools. So I would go up 10 feet, 20 feet and dive off of diving boards and just to get that feeling. And you know, at certain heights, water is very forgiving and at other heights, it's not. So I had to figure out where that threshold was to where I can enter uh, the water. So that helped me a lot. She's a lot of fun. Actually, we've, um, we've had a great time working on this and I feel like Scarlett has kind of picked up where she left off with this character, which I find remarkable to be able to do that year after year, leave a character, do a couple of projects now and revisit it in the same vein. But she's been able to do a really good job at that and kind of you know, help the story and help everybody along in what this movie is becoming. I had a lot of homework to do and caught up on all of the Captain America comic books, which was actually really fun and it made me realize that, you know, there's this whole other universe out there that's kind of exciting and I'm kind of into now. Um, but. Yeah, it was, um, no, it wasn't something that I was familiar with, so it was a really, really fun time looking into it and getting to know, you know, Agent 13. I'm playing Agent 13, and, and we're sort of introducing her um, as this, like, up-and-coming agent, um, clearly very hard worker, um, really passionate about what she's doing here. I did really enjoy sort of watching their journey in the comic books, which is also um, interesting because it's different in each comic book. So for me, it was all about pulling, you know, uh, the stuff that I loved from each different comic book and um, from their relationship and just trying to incorporate some of that into, into who, you know, into who I'm playing in the film. I've just had, you know, the chance to meet some incredible people. I mean, just meeting Robert Redford was kind of an 
amazing moment uh, in my career so far. And, um, you know, just working with these terrific people. I love the Russo brothers. They've been so kind and I, I think are doing a tremendous job with the film. Um, you know, Marvel knows how to do it well, I think. You know, it's a very well-oiled machine. Um, yeah, it's, it's just been a, a, an awesome experience. My character's uh, uh, Brock Rumlow. Uh, you, know, you know, it's the origin, if you want to talk about the origin of the character, starts off as Brock Rumlow, who, uh, who's basically, you know, uh, he's basically a Navy SEAL, is the way I see him. He is an elite uh, uh, special ops guy who works for S.H.I.E.L.D., who takes care of business with Cap. When Cap goes on a mission, he's the guy on the right hand, by the right hand of Cap, to take care of business. I think when you have two guys who are really fighting each other, uh, you know, it brings that authenticity to the film. It brings a grittiness. It brings that realism. And uh, you know, you can't when two when like when it's me or and Chris or, or or me and Anthony, you can't fake it. You know, there's no you can't manufacture being hit. You're getting hit. So I think it all adds to, to the, uh, you know, again, to the authenticity of the film. And I think that's why this one, this movie, because the script is so on point, and the, everyone here has just brought their A game, I think, I think people are going to really fall in love with this. I got to tell you, I've never worked with two guys who were more confident and knew their story more than these guys. They do not crack under pressure. They are never sick at sea. And uh, they're always open to conversation with their actors. I think, unlike other, uh, other movies in this genre, I think they can expect um, a real intriguing story, uh, a, a story that really makes people think. It's just, you, you know, the story isn't just, there, there's not just a bunch of plot devices to get you through a fight or to, you know, it's, uh, I think people are going to be as, 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 uh, as engaged with the story as they are, are with the action. I think there's a great balance here and it's a little darker and a little grittier and, uh, you know, I just, I just think more people are going to be exposed to it than even the first Captain America. You can't have a, a thriller without stakes, and stakes are emotional. Stakes have to play real. And especially in a political thriller, which has sort of contemporary themes to it, you have to play as real as possible to relate to the audience. Uh, otherwise, I think you're losing a, a layer or texture uh, uh, to, to the, to, you can't really call yourself a political thriller unless you're topical. Um, so it was important on that level that we ground the movie because you've got to make the audience care. In the Avengers, it's so it's so short, it's shortly after the events of the first movie, so he hasn't had a lot of time to process the modern world. And our film has been a, a good amount of time has passed, so he has had time to process. Um, being a, a super soldier, there's not a lot of options to him left to him. I mean, it, his, his loyalty uh, he believes to the government and to the to the United States. Um, but the, uh, the organization that, you know, would make sense for him to work for, S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, is a complicated organization that deals in greys and uh, clandestine motivations, and that's not really who Cap is. So he winds up working for uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, but he's a real conflict with Nick Fury about how the organization should be run and why he's doing what he's doing. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, we couldn't resist the idea of putting those two characters together because, you know, Cap is so uh, has such a strong moral code to him, and Widow lives in the gray, lies for a living. It's you know, it's just sort of like it's fire and water, and to force those two in a situation where they have to engage each other and even possibly trust each other was a, was, was a fun journey to take them on. What I love about him, what I think is almost impossible to convey about this character, uh, which I think he does amazingly well, is he combines machismo with the level of morality, which can be very difficult. Because if the character goes Boy Scout on you, then he becomes really uninteresting. And I, he has real layers in this movie. Um, 
you know, he's made the character very complex. So he emerges in the film as a sort of, you know, ghostly figure. Uh, but once he gets pulled into the events, um, you know, uh, obviously there's a, the big reveal in the movie to Cap is that, uh, that this ghost op is, uh, is his best friend uh, from, uh, from, the war t from World War II, uh, who he thought had perished in battle. Uh, and it creates this sort of upheaval and catharsis for Cap of, you know, uh, who is this guy? So you want to introduce characters so that they're relevant to the storytelling in those two hours and to your experience of that movie and the experience of the universe up to that point. Uh, that's the best way to bring those characters, uh, um, uh, you know, and that's the primary purpose of bringing them in. Then you go look at the source material and you say, you know, is it Ultimate Sam? Is it the original Sam? Is it, you know, what, what direction are we going to go? How does he fit into the tone of this movie and, in, and into the storytelling of this film? Uh, and, and for us, it was more of the ultimate Sam. It was more of a, a military-based character um, because that, again, we're going for a real-world approach. But we also wanted a character that could connect to Cap really quickly. So the fact that they were both vets, we felt like it was something they could bond over very quickly in the film. And, and it would give them a shorthand with one another and also a trust of one another. I mean, he has great integrity as an actor. That's what we love about Mackie. He has incredible screen presence. What we, we wanted Falcon to be a, uh, you know, uh, a part of a team with Cap, not a sidekick. And in order to do that, you need an actor who can hold the screen uh, opposite all these great actors that are in the film. And you need somebody who can flesh that character out with limited screen time in a very three-dimensional way, and that's Mackie. You know, very, just an incredibly accomplished actor. Uh, but the tone was really important to the character. I really like Sam as this as a guy who's his own person who can challenge Cap when he needs to challenge Cap uh, and can support Cap when he needs to support Cap. Um, so th that's, that's, uh, that's why we chose Mackie. From a cultural standpoint, uh, it's fun. Uh, not to mention that he's one of the great actors of all time and the biggest icon that we have uh, in the business. Um, and on top of which, one of the coolest guys you'll ever meet. Uh, from a process standpoint, getting him in the film, again, Marcus and McFeely wrote an amazing script. He read the script. He really liked the script. And then uh, Anthony and Kevin went over and sat with him for a few hours and just talked about the film and the part. He had great ideas for the part. Uh, you know, Bob, I think there's a reason that he does a lot of political thrillers is because, you know, he, he's politically inclined. Uh, and, and, you know, that's the kind of material that motivates him. So even though the movie's fantastical uh, and it's not like anything he's done before, uh, I, it's a superhero film, he could understand the, you know, the themes of the movie and he understood the, uh, the character's place in the world. In The Avengers, we got to spend a little time with him as he was navigating the modern day. But really, that film takes place over a tight period of time when Loki is there and the aliens are about to invade and the threat is, is gigantic right off the bat. So he doesn't have a lot of time to, uh, to sort of contemplate his new, his new position in this new world. Uh, and we wanted to explore that this time. And it's great because Chris Evans is, uh, is such a good actor and is growing into this part and is embracing this part in such a great way um, that we get to see those other sides of Steve as he navigates this world of greys when he, he came from a place where, where it was very clear who the good guys were, who the bad guys were. We knew that Steve was going to be working with S.H.I.E.L.D. in this film. He can't go back in time and live in the 40s again. Um, unlike some of the other characters who Thor can go back to Asgard, Ka uh, uh, Tony can go back to Malibu. We really wanted to put Steve with some of the other S.H.I.E.L.D. characters. And Black Widow was the, was the obvious choice. They have a great dynamic in the comic books. What time they spent together in the final battle of Avengers was very good, and they had a good, they had a good rapport together. We wanted to see more of that, explore more of that. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a very, very important mantle to take when you, when you take on any beloved Marvel character. And the Falcon is one of the most beloved Marvel characters going back um, for years and years. So, so 
it's always a big responsibility for us to find the right actor. And when we do, you know, one of the ways we know they're the right actor is when they realize what a responsibility is. And, and Anthony Mackie embraced this part um, um, uh, uh, right alongside all of the great actors that have inhabited our roles. Uh, he knew it was important, but at the same time, he wanted to have fun with it. So right off the bat in the film, the audience is laughing with him and laughing with Sam Wilson and, and really getting into his character. He's sort of the eyes of the audience in some way. Um, he finds himself thrust into the middle of, of half of the Avengers and, and, a, very, and a huge storyline that has great, great stakes to it. Um, but he's the eyes of the normal person. And even though he gets his pack and he gets his wings and he, can, and he can fight alongside the best of them, for a large part of the movie, he's sort of just sort of trying to figure out. We want to find filmmakers who can take what we have from the comics, sort of we, we generally outline the story and know essentially what we want to tell, but we want somebody to come and elevate it. In our meetings with the Russo brothers, I was a huge fan of their work on community, a huge fan of their work on Arrested Development. And, and in meeting with them, knew that they had, just, well, I had a hunch that they had uh, it in them to really, really elevate one of our, our properties. They loved the idea that we were presenting to them, this 70s political thriller, the, the much more contemporary, much more um, uh, grounded uh, uh, superhero story this time. And they have embraced it and improved it and delivered what I think is the best pure action film we've ever made. Well, the biggest thing about uh, what we wanted to, to deliver, and I think, and I think the Russo brothers have done have done a tremendous job in delivering this, is a movie unlike any other Marvel movie. It is tonally very, very different. It's got the humor, it's got the action, but at the same time, we see characters exploring sort of their their situations in a, in a much deeper and richer way than we've done in, in the other films. And there's a level of action in this film, and a, a level of practical action of actual stunts, of actual car chases um, that is above and beyond anything we've done in any of our films. Well, Going with the Winter Soldier, it's one of our, our most famous books, and, uh, and uh, Sebastian Stan playing, uh, playing the best friend, Bucky, was, uh, was a great uh, coup for us. We love that actor. We love his portrayal of it. So we said, why don't we combine, we, we take the Winter Soldier, and, uh, and Cap is our ground, one of our most grounded superheroes. Uh, from where he comes from Brooklyn, he, he grew up in the streets, he's, uh, he's a man of the people, and uh, putting that combination with, with back with Sebastian Stan, I, you know, it was a no-brainer for us. I think what's great about all, uh, many of our characters that we've come to know, know uh, in prior films is that they, you're going to see another side of them. There's secrets that are revealed that you haven't seen before. There's areas that have to go in. There's obstacles that they have to overcome that they haven't had to overcome before. They bring so much passion. They, they, they are hard-nosed Cleveland boys. They have a great work ethic. They love the character. Uh, uh, it's just a, uh, it, it was such a great experience working with them on this, uh, f from every aspect too, from script development until until marketing. They're they're involved. They uh, uh, they they you know they want it to be as good as it can be. There is no agenda. They have no ego here uh, when it comes to making the best film possible, and uh, it's been an utterly enjoyable experience. That kind of talent. Being in our film, not it legitimizes us, I think. Uh, also, the fact that we were set with the backdrop of a political thriller to have him, you know, after doing Three Days of the Condor, one of my favorite films, um, I, I think that connection is great. I think they're going to see an action film uh, 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 wrapped around a, a very interesting and compelling story. So when you take those two elements, or let's say three elements, great characters, uh, uh, um, great intrigue and story, and great action. I I'm hopeful that they're going to be wowed and uh, say that, you know, that was a really great experience.